There are four major types of tissues and we're done with epithelial tissue. The next two videos will be on connective tissue, which is the most abundant and widely distributed type. There's four classes of connective tissue that you see here. Connective tissue proper, cartilage, bone, and blood. Some of these classes have subclasses. In this table, we organize all types of connective tissue. This is a good table to know which connective tissue falls under what subclass and which class. So let's start with connective tissue proper. It could be loose or it could be dense. There's three types of loose, three types of dense. The loose are areolar, adipose, and reticular. The dense are regular, irregular, and elastic. There's three types of cartilage, hyaline, elastic, and fibrocartilage. Then you have bone and blood. So these are the types of connective tissue, the classes and the subclasses that we are going to go through. The function of the connective tissue really depends on which class we're talking about. You can see the functions are all over the place. Transportation if it's blood, protection if it's bone, and then most connective tissue will bind and support. Some will store reserve fuel like adipose tissue. Adipose tissue is also there for insulation, so the function will depend mainly on which type of connective tissue we're dealing with. You may be thinking, how is blood and bone and fat all in the same category of connective tissue? They seem like they have nothing to do with each other. Well, all of the connective tissue that we mentioned on that table in a previous slide all come from the same stem cell, which we call mesenchyme. Cells in mesenchyme tissue can differentiate into any type of connective tissue on our list. With epithelial tissue, we learn that cells are packed tightly together and they're held tightly together. That's not so with connective tissue. With most connective tissue, there's space in between the cells. We call that space in between the cells the extracellular matrix. And that matrix is just as important as the cells in connective tissue when classifying the, the types. So we're looking at connective tissue here. We can see a cell over here, some other cells over there, but there's a lot of space between cells. Many of these cells, which we call fibroblasts, secrete these long protein fibers that look like threads or strings, which are mainly there for structure or support or for elasticity. All the space in between the cells filled with all of these protein fibers is the extracellular matrix. matrix. And there's also background fluid, a gel-like substance that we call ground substance. So what I went through in this picture, we can define with this equation right here. The extracellular matrix, which is the space between the cells, is the ground substance, the gel-like soup, and protein fibers, these thread-like or string-like structures. So we know the matrix is ground substances and fibers, but what exactly are these thread-like or string-like fibers in the matrix, sometimes called the extracellular matrix? Well, here's the three types of fibers. The strongest one, and what we see the most of, is called collagen, because it provides strength. It resists stress. Elastic fibers allow for stretch and recoil. And then there's reticular fibers, what we'll see in a specific type of tissue, that branches that allows a framework of support for cells. That covered the extracellular matrix, but remember the matrix is the space in between the cells. What about the cells themselves? Well, that will depend on what type of connective tissue we're dealing with. If the cells are immature, meaning they are still secreting material into the extracellular space, into the matrix, those cells are called blasts. Typically, that will be the suffix or the ending of the name of the cell. When cells are done secreting, they are called sites, meaning cells, they have completed their blast stage, stage or secretion stage and now are in a mature stage of maintaining the area. 
We'll see some examples on the next slide. So fibroblasts, it's a blast, so it secretes fibers like collagen, elastic fibers, and reticular fibers. We find that in connective tissue proper. You may recall there's three loose types and three dense types, which we haven't gone over yet. Chondroblasts, chondro means cartilage. So chondroblasts are cells in cartilage that secrete the matrix of cartilage, which is a gel-like substance. When they're done, they become chondrocytes. Osteoblasts secrete bone material until they become osteocytes, where they're just merely maintaining the area. So we see the difference between blasts and sites in these two examples here. We also have hematopoietic stem cells. Hematopoietic means blood forming. They are found in bone marrow. And then other cells that we see in connective tissue are fat cells, which are adipose cells. And the rest here are types of blood, blood cells which help to fight infection. So here we have a fibroblast which is secreting matrix. It's secreting these collagen fibers and elastic fibers in orange here. There's a lymphocyte, which is a type of white blood cell to fight infection with a macrophage. There's a fat cell, which we call an, uh, an adipose cell. Connective tissue is vascular, so you'll see blood vessels like this capillary. So this is just a good picture of what connective tissue might look like. 